Good morning, preschool. How are you this morning? Let's try round two this morning. Um, I just want to say, Happy St. Patrick's Day! Isn't that awesome? You see, I have my special clover scarf on today, and it's so cool. Ah, I'm so excited to spend this day with you. Except, guys, what was our color this month? You're right. It was a green for St. Patrick's Day. It was, ah, oh, can I get out of here? Oh, it was purple. Look at this. We're going to talk about the color purple today. Aren't you excited? I am. So let's get started with our morning. Big breath in. And let it out nice and slowly, putting on that school body, which you know means our ears are open for listening. Our eyes are open for looking and learning. Good job. And another big breath in. And let it out nice and slowly, putting your school body on. And my hand is over my heart. And oh, what is in there? Yes, you're right. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness. And yes, self-control. And they're all put there in our heart by God, ah, oh, what a great day. So, oh, if all those things are in my heart, can they stay in there? No, no, it's getting bigger and it's starting to burst out everywhere. It's going all over you. It's going all over me. It's going up the walls, across the ceiling. It's everywhere in our homes, in our world. That means who is welcome here? You're right. Let's let him know. God, you are welcome here. And if you're not from God, where do you have to go? That's right. Out the door now. Ugh. Just feels so good when our hearts and our homes are full of God and his love and all his special gifts to us. So maybe we should start our day by letting him know how much we like him in our lives. Ready? Are your hands folded to say our prayer? I hope so. Here we go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Woohoo! I don't know about you, but that sure fills me up with a lot of, you're right, joy. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. But is that it? No. What else is in there? Yes, you're right. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Yay! <clears throat> but you know what I heard? I heard the weatherman said it was going to be very sunny today. Won't that be fun to see the sunshine and the snow? Maybe we could go out and make a snowman. How awesome. That seems like a great reason to do some rejoicing. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. 
and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yay! Thank you, Lord! And the Lord makes every day St. Patrick's Day and Purple Day! Woohoo! So, my fave, one of my favorite purple stories is about a mouse. Can you guess her name? I bet you can. It's Lily. Do you see Lily? Ah, look at her. And guess what? She has a purple plastic purse. Now, I know we're not having a letter this week, but we already talked about these beautiful letters right there. Do you recognize those? Do you remember what starts with with purple, plastic, purse. Hmm, I think you're right. That's the letter P. And of course, Lily, L, L, Lily, started with what letter? Oh, I think we even talked about it yesterday. You're right, L. So we have a beautiful letter L, and then one, two, three letter P's for Lily's purple plastic purse. When you come down here on the bottom, it says Kevin Hankins. Who is that? Hmm. You're right. That's the author. And we know that author writes the story. Author writes the story. Author writes the story. That's why he came first. Now I'm going to look at that beautiful purple page with those beautiful star shapes. And here I am. Oh, what special page would this be? You're right. Oh, I can't trick you guys at all. This is the title page. But you know, Kevin Hankins is the only one on here, which means he's not just the author, but he's also the... You're right. Good job, guys. He's the illustrator. And we know that illustrators illustrate, illustrators illustrate, illustrators illustrate, which means he made the pictures for Lily's purple plastic purse. <clears throat> oh, look, she's running so fast. They're saying, wait for us, wait for us, because she's like, I love school. And Lily did love school. She loved the pointy pencils. Wink, wink, wink. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way her boots went clickety clack, clickety click, clickety click down the long, shiny hallways. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. And she loved the fish sticks and the chocolate milk on Friday in the lunchroom. Mmm, and straws make everything taste better. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. Ah, oh, she even brought him a purple flower. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts. He wore glasses on a chain around his neck. He wore different colored tie for each day of the week. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say was wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger would wink and say, howdy. He thought that desks in a row were old fashioned and boring. Do you rodents think you can handle a semicircle? And he always provided the most tasty snacks, things that were curly and crunchy and cheesy. Oh, I wanna be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends, Chester and Wilson and Victor. At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slinger. I am the teacher, she told her baby brother Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. What's with Lily? asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. 
It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. And that was just about all he could say was, Wow, these teachers know everything, Julius. <clears throat> Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing. Lily went often. She had lots of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger, and she wrote stories about him, too. And during sharing time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. And that was just about all he could say was, wow. And at that very last second, Mr. Slinger saved the cold and starving elderly. The big, friendly, Mr. Nice Man Teacher by me, Lily. That was what she was reading to the class. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line, even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in the class, even if she didn't know the answer. Go on me, go on me, please, please go on me, please, 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 please. And she volunteered to stay after and clap the erasers. Oh, I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Ah, excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. One Monday morning, Lily came to school, especially happy. She had gone shopping with her Grammy over the weekend. Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses, complete with glittery diamonds and a chain just like Mr. Slinger's. She had three shiny quarters, and best of all, she had a brand new purple plastic purse that played a jaunty tune whenever it was opened. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Ooh, Lily had a hard time being considerate. Because Lily really, really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait. The glasses were so glittery, the quarters were so shiny, and the purse played such nice music, not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely, look everyone, look what I've got. And everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger, who was not amused. Hmm. I think she needed a little bit of the fruit of the spirit, self-control. Because sharing time, just like for you guys, show and tell time, comes at the right time, doesn't it? I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there, and then you can take them home. <gasps> Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone. Her quarters were gone. Her purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. That afternoon, Lily went to the light bulb lab. She was still very sad. She thought and she thought and she thought. And then she became angry. She thought, and she thought, and she thought some more, and then she became furious. She thought, and she thought, and she thought a bit longer, and then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Uh-oh. Is that a good idea to do things when we're feeling upset? Maybe not. Might have been a good way for her to get the feelings out, though, right? But not very nice way. Big, fat, mean, Mr. Stealing teacher 
He's got claws. He's a bad teacher. He's a thief. He's super bad teacher. He's wanted by the FBI. And P.S. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up. Well, she might have had a lot of feelings, but was that the right way to do it? Mm, I don't know either, guys. Let's keep reading. Right before the last bell rang, Lily sneaked the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. When all the student, students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied and ready to go home, Mr. Slinger strolled over to Lily and gave her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slinger. Your quarters are nice and jingly and those glasses... Those glasses are absolutely fabulous. You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said as she marched out of the classroom. Oh, that makes my heart sad. Mr. Slinger was being very kind, and was Lily right to interrupt her class? No, mm, that hurts my heart. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and her quarters were inside, and so was a note from Mr. Slinger. It said, Today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. And there was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of the purse. Now, do you see what Lily's face looks like? She's walking home. She reads the note, and now she doesn't feel very big, does she? Lily's stomach lurched. <laughs> she felt like crying. She felt simply awful. Lily ran all the way to home and told her mother and father everything. That was a very wise thing to do. Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. That's kind of like our Red X chair at school. I'll stay here for a million years for Mr. Slinger. Gee, she's even got a tear. Why does everything always happen to me? And now she's sitting there and she's counting all the way up to 1,051. 1,052, 1,099. That night, Lily drew a, pic a new picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him, too. It says, Lily was really, really sorry, so everyone forgave her, even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, even her especially incredible teacher. And then the sun shined its smiley face down on everyone and everything, even the bugs and the worms. The end. And it says, listen up. I forgive everyone. Hey, he's a really good guy. He could even maybe be the principal because he's so nice and good and kind. And here's the worms and the bugs and oops, <laughs> she accidentally stepped on a bug. Oh. But she does say, I am really, 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 really sorry. And she really was. Lily's mother wrote a note, and Lily's father baked some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slinger will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will, said Lily's father. How, and besides, how could he resist my no-frills cheese balls? So the next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, Lily said to Mr. Slinger, because I am, ready? Really, 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 sorry. Mr. Slinger read the story, and he looked at the picture, and he read the note, and he sampled the snacks. Yum, 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 yum. Wow, said Mr. Slinger, and that was just about all he could say. Wow. What do you think?
think we should do with this? Asked Mr. Slinger. Um, could we just throw it away? Asked Lily. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. During sharing time, Lily demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery movie star sunglasses. So the purse was, it's like having an extra pocket with a radio inside. And the three quarters are even better than a dollar because they make noise. And her sunglasses are glamorous protection from any harmful sun rays. Then she did a little performance using them as props. It's called interpretive dance, said Lily. And Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, the entire class said. And that was just about all they could say, was wow. Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She peeked at them often, but she did not disturb a soul. And right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily's snacks to everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher! everyone responded, and Lily's response was the loudest! Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. As the pupils filed out of the classroom, Lily held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy. Remember yesterday when she was walking home? When she felt smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Ah, doing good things. Making sure that you are responsible for the things that you do. Make you feel like you could fly. And she really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. That is, when she didn't want to be a dancer, or a surgeon, or an ambulance driver, or a diva, or a pilot, or a hairdresser, or a scuba diver, or anything at all. The end. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse by Kevin Hankins. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That is one of my favorite purple stories of all times. Now we're going to move on talking about being a star. Lily had her fabulous star sunglasses, right? Um, I was wondering if you also recognize this shape. Do you see it? This one is a rhombus. Remember rhombus? Or we can call it a diamond too. It is either. It's like I'm a teacher but I'm also a mom. I can be the same person and have two names. This is a diamond and a rhombus. School name would be rhombus, right? And hey, what about this shape here? Do you see this one? This is a crescent. Now, if I tip it over on its side, is it still a crescent? If I go this way, is it still a crescent? You guys are so smart. Good job. You're right. It is a crescent no matter which way it goes. And the other shape I have is a circle. Good job. Excellent. So I had a circle, a crescent, a rhombus, and a star. Do you remember where I'm going with this? I hope so. If you do, join in with me. Ready? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a rhombus in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. But I was wondering if you thought we could change up the words a little bit. How about 
if I saw this up in the sky, I might think it was a, you're right, Ugh, you guys are so smart, I might think it was a moon. So how about twinkle, twinkle, little moon, how I wonder what you are up above the world so high like a crescent in the sky twinkle twinkle little moon how i wonder what you are now if i was thinking about something that is big and bright and twinkly all day long and it kind of is in the shape of a circle hmm can you think of what i'm thinking a sun, that's right. How about twinkle, twinkle, big old sun. How I wonder what you are up above the world so high, like a circle in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, big old sun. How I wonder what you are. So, do not recommend looking at the sun today. So see if you can find something somewhere that is a circle as you go about your day. How about if you look around today and see if you can find anything that is a crescent. Could you find anything that looks like the shape of a star? And don't forget our rhombus. Our rhombus wants to be found somewhere. Good luck finding shapes in everything you do today, class. Good job. Now, guys, I have to admit something. It's true. Oh, silly Mrs. Ryan. Yesterday when we talked about our letters, I did not know they were backwards. Oh, I know. See, mistakes can happen to anyone. And the best thing that we can do if we make a mistake is learn from it and go forward, right? So yesterday, he probably looked about right, don't you think? This is the letter T, 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 T right here. And we had our turtle and our tortoise. And we were going to look for things around our house and around our world that starts with the letter t t t t t He probably looked okay. But when we got to the letter L, like this lizard, and I think we talked about a lion and other things that we could find that started with the letter L, I don't think he was in the right shape. So here he is for real. Our big line down and our little line across. That is the letter L. And it's the same thing with our letter F. Here is our letter F. We have a beautiful fish, don't we? And this time his, his arms are going in the right direction. So I am sorry for that, my preschool friends. But going forward, we will know that. You know, I just used some F words right there, F -f forward, and my favorite one, oh, favorite too, friends. So, we had this letter F, and he has two arms that go out, one on the top mm -hmm. and one in the middle. I'm thinking of a letter that if we added one more line out, he would turn into what? You're right. You guys are so smart. He would turn into the letter E. There's our letter E, and we had some eh, eh, elephants. And are you going to eat some eggs today? Mm, very tasty. Now, I want you to remember something very important. Where do we start those letters from? That's right. Good job. From the top, from the top, from the top, 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 from the top, from the top, from the top, 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 from the top, from the top, from the top, top, top. We start our letters from the top. So we started with this guy over here. Oh, no, you're right. The smiley would be over here. 
One big line down, and then let's count them together. One, two, three lines out. But are these big lines or are these little lines? You're right, it was little lines. One big line down and three little lines out. But what if we change them around just a little bit more from the letter E? Hmm. And do you remember how the T likes to balance on the top? What if we took this letter? Do you remember what this letter is? Ah, oh, good job, guys. You're right. This is the letter I with our icy igloo. And we started where? That's right, from the top with our big line down. But he needed a hat and he needed some shoes, didn't he? And do we want our hat over on the side? Oh, no, we want it right on top of our head. Just like our shoes have to be on both feet. You can't wear both shoes on one foot, just like the letter I. So start from the top, big line down, put on his hat and put on his shoes with a little line on the top and a little line on the bottom and you have the letter I. Mm. Maybe you could have some ice cream later. And then we moved on to another letter with lots of lines. He almost looks like he wants to make a ladder, doesn't he? But he is a H. We've got a house or, or it even could be a home. Both of them start with this beautiful letter H. Now, He's got his line down, because you know we're going to start on this one. Pretend Mr. Smiley is over here. One big line down. And then jump over here and make another big line down. But we need the two to connect, right? So make the bridge with the little line. So one big line down, two big lines down, and the bridge in the middle with the little line. So see all the things that you, now you've got double work to do today. You've got to see if you can find anything else that starts with the letter H, anything else that starts with the letter I, anything in your house around your world that starts with the letter E, and since they're not backwards today, at least I hope they're not backwards today, the letter F, the letter L, and the letter T. Good luck finding all those shapes and letters today, my friends. Now, before we leave, I had a Bible story for you this morning. Now, I know, you're like, Mrs. Ryan, why aren't we at school? Why are you doing this on a video? Where are all the other children? Well, all of our friends are home with their families and we're getting ready to take a, just a nice little spring break. And so if things seem a little different, that's always okay. Anytime things seem a little scary or different, or even like in Lily's story when she was feeling so angry, there is always someone we know that we can take all these things to, and that's God. God is always with us, and he's always listening. You don't have to wait for him to answer the phone. You don't have to wait for him to be on the computer. He is always, always with you. And the best part is he is always, always there to help you and protect you. And our story is about some guys who didn't remember that, and they got a little scared. And this story is called The Wind That Obeyed. And you could find this in three, one, two, three places in the Bible. You could read it in the book of Matthew. You could read it in the book of Mark. And you could even read it in the book of Luke. That's pretty cool. So The Wind That Obeyed. Come, said Jesus. 
get into the boat. Let's go for a ride. Jesus got into the boat. Jesus' friends got into the boat. And splash went the little waves. Can you help them splash? Splash, 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 splash. Good job. I knew I could count on you. Oops, sorry. Jesus' friends began to make the boat go. Oh, look at them. They have to row it. Can you help them row it? They went pull and push and pull and push and pull and push. Good rowing, guys. But Jesus was tired. Oh. Oh my goodness, I've been just working so hard and talking so much. So he lay down in the back of the boat and went to sleep. Can you pretend to sleep? You can't sleep. You're supposed to be rowing the boat. Pull, push, pull, push. You can't sleep, guys. Now while the boat was going, the wind started to blow. Can you just give a little wind? Ooh, 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 ooh. And it blew the men's hair, and it blew their clothes, and it blew the water, and it started to get bigger. Ready? A little more wind. Ooh, 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 ooh. And soon the little boat was rolling up, 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 down, 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 and they were afraid too. Oh, our boat is getting water inside. Let's tell Jesus, they said. Save us, Lord. Wake up. Wake up. Jesus opened his eyes and he saw the water splash and he heard the wind blow. But he said, why are you afraid? I'm here. Good question. Then Jesus talked to the wind. He talked to the water and he said, shh, be still. And do you know what happened? Can you take a guess what happened? This is Jesus. It's not just anybody. This is Jesus. Do you suppose that the wind listened to him? It's the wind. Does the wind listen to you? It doesn't listen to me. Did the water, does the water listen to you? It doesn't listen to me either. Oh, but it sure did listen to Jesus. The wind stopped blowing. The water stopped splashing. And they both got still as could be. Jesus' friends looked around and everything was quiet and safe. Ah, who is Jesus, they said. Even the wind and the water does what he says. I don't know who Jesus is, do you? Jesus made the wind. Jesus made the water. Jesus is God. Wow. Jesus really took care of his friends, didn't he? He didn't let them get hurt. He didn't let the boat get wet inside. And the wind and the rain had to listen to him. So do you think that means Jesus could take care of anything that's going on in your life? I agree. I know he could. All we have to do is say hello and he's just a prayer away, right? You take that with you today. Anytime anything seems scary or different or maybe you're feeling angry like Lily, it's better to take it to God or Jesus first than to get angry and make that ugly picture, right? I agree. Okay, guys, I think that's pretty good for today, don't you? So how about our, good, our goodbye song? Do you have your alligators? 
Ready? So let me see your alligators. See you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. Bye bye, butterfly. Bye bye, butterfly. Give a hug, ladybug. Give a hug, ladybug. Be sweet, parakeet. Be sweet, parakeet. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, raccoon. See you soon, raccoon. Take care, polar bear. Take care, polar bear. Out the door, dinosaur. Out the door, dinosaur. So long, King Kong. So long, King Kong. Bye-bye, Santa Fly. Bye-bye, Santa Fly. And remember, our Bible verse says in Ephesians 4.32, Be kind to one another. Mrs. Ryan loves you guys. I miss you guys. But God loves you even more. Bye-bye.